This is Viterbi Voices. Coming to you from the University of Southern California, Viterbi School of Engineering. We're here to give you the inside scoop on research, classes, student life, and so much more. All of these shared by students, faculty, alumni, and other members of the USC community. Back. Good morning. I don't know what time it is. Welcome back to Viterbi Voices. As usual, I am one of your co-hosts. My name is Paul Ledesma. I am the Executive Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Hello, everybody. I'm your other co-host, Maya Neuenschwander, a current junior studying industrial and systems engineering here at Viterbi. And joining us is, I think, uh, someone new to the podcast. Uh, so introduce yourself, mystery guest. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Celine Vasquez. I'm a junior studying biomedical engineering here at USC, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome, Celine. And where are you from? I'm from Montebello, California, so about oh. a 20-minute drive from campus. Not too far at all. <laughs> so, Celine, welcome to the podcast. It's really good to have you here. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what today's episode is all about, because you bring it to us. So today's episode, I brought some of my friends from BME, Biomedical Engineering, and we're just talking about our classes, life at USC, and giving some advice. And it was a really fun episode to film. We just sat over some boba and just talked to each other. So it was a really nice conversation. I'm really excited for you all to hear it. BME and boba, a fantastic <laughs> alliterative uh, topic today. And uh, Celine, just a real quick, a little bit more bit about you. Um, how did you end up studying biomedical engineering? Is this something that you always wanted to do? Yeah. So in high school, I really liked robotics. So engineering was always something that I wanted to do. And I also really enjoyed biology and was really interested in having engineering and the medical field combined. So biomedical engineering seemed like the perfect route for me to do that. Awesome. And uh, without giving anything away, do you know where you're going after college or what you would like to do after college? I'm not 100% sure, but I'm not, leaning yeah. towards graduate school and then potentially a role with Medtronic. Yeah. Right. Selena right, and cool. I, Selena and I, we're like... <laughs> where we're connected. Um, I think we both so, internet Medtronic this last summer. Yeah, for, for for those not in the know, can you, can either of you explain what Medtronic is and what they do and make? Because they're they're a pretty big company. Mm -hmm. Take it away, Celine. Yeah, Medtronic is basically the biggest biomedical medical device company in the world. Um, they make a lot of different devices. I work specifically in the diabetes operating unit, so working a lot with the insulin pumps. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Well, uh, for those of you that are thinking at all about biomedical engineering or where the life sciences can come to affect the ideas and creations of technology related to health and the human body, this is a fantastic conversation with some BME over boba. So grab your boba and uh, let's get going into this conversation. Okay. Hi, everyone. I am here with my friends from BME, and we are also here with our boba that we bought earlier. Um, I'll go ahead and start to introduce myself. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Liam Vasquez. I'm a junior studying biomedical engineering with no emphasis, and I'm from Montebello, California. And the boba flavor that I had was brown sugar boba from Pot of Cha. It's a boba place right across the street from the USC Village, really close and really good. So I'm going to go around and have my friends introduce themselves and also say what boba flavor they got. I'm Asna. I am a biomedical engineering major with a molecular cellular emphasis. My minor is in resistance to genocide, which is in the history department. Um, I am from Chino Hills, California, which is about an hour east of USC. And my boba order today is Thai tea. Hi, I'm Anthony. I'm a junior studying biomedical engineering with molecular cellular emphasis. I'm from Santa Clarita, California, and I also got the brown sugar flavor. My name is Christian. I am a senior with a double major in biomedical engineering with an electrical emphasis and East Asian languages and cultures. I'm from Fullerton, California, and my order today was a red ruby milk tea with boba. Hi, I'm Grace. I'm a BME major and I have an electrical engineering emphasis. I also have a specialization in connected devices and making and am taking advantage of our nautical science program. I'm trying to get my captain's license as well. Um, I'm from the Bay Area, and my boba flavor today is the brown sugar boba. Um, I was inspired by Celine's order. 
Hi everyone, my name is Lauren. I'm a BME with an electrical emphasis and a minor in blockchain. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada, and my boba order for tonight was green Thai tea. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys for being here. It's really nice to have you all here. Um, the first question, we're going to start off easy. This is a question that you guys should probably have an answer to. If you don't have one by now, then that's low-key kind of scary. But <laughs> it's going to be, why did you choose BME and decide to come to USC for BME in the first place? Yeah, I can start. So the reason why I chose biomedical engineering um, is because when my parents immigrate from India and I visit back to my parents' hometown a bit, um, I can see the fact that medical devices are a huge factor in the ability to access healthcare and the ability to access medicine. And so like visiting back and like seeing the disparities in the access to medical devices was really tough. So knowing that I wanted to one day be a physician and as a pre-med, I chose BME as a way to figure out if there's a way that we can improve access to medical devices. So I'm just here at USC, like exploring the ways that people make medical devices. So for me, I've always wanted to be an engineer. I feel like I've known that from a pretty young age. And I didn't even know that biomedical engineering was a thing until like pretty late into high school. Um, but I ended up having a spine surgery. And it was kind of the moment when I realized that like medicine wasn't entirely figured out. And I realized that there was a lot of space for innovation and a lot of need for innovation. And so I started to realize that this was a problem. And then I realized that there was a whole field dedicated to it and an entire career like or I guess educational path in order to learn more about like this issue and how to solve it. And uh, when I was looking at schools with biomedical engineering programs, USC's was really apparent. It was one of the first biomedical engineering programs in the country. And it's an amazing program with a lot of really cool professors. Uh, and it's really inter interdisciplinary. So you can also get kind of, I know we all talked about like specializations and things, but you can take classes in other majors to help apply those skills uh, to solving the issues. And that's a big part of the reason I chose BME at USC. I guess for me, the motivation or my motivation for choosing BME specifically was because I guess I chose to do engineering specifically to help people. And I felt like if I was in BME, um, my success would be measured by the number of people I helped rather than how much I like increase the company's profits. So I guess that was my main <laughs> motivation. I ended up choosing to come to USC because um, USC has a pretty good student to faculty ratio. Uh, you get a lot of, or there are a lot of professors with really cool research that you can get to take classes with and get to talk to one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and especially since USC has a lot of connections through Keck, you can get um, involved in research pretty early in a whole bunch of different cutting edge fields, which I thought was pretty cool. So I was exposed to the field from a pretty young age. Both of my parents worked in the biomedical engineering industry at some point, uh, but I wanted to take part in the field from a different way. Like Austin, I'm also pre-med, um, but I don't really want to go into devices later on. I prefer to go into cancer research. Uh, my family has a pretty extensive history of cancer, just a high amount of patients that have uh, suffered through some form or another. Uh, so I wanted to take part in cancer research from an engineering perspective and hopefully take that experience with me to medical school. Yeah, I think kind of going off of something that was said earlier, I was drawn to BME because of like how innovative it is. I originally wanted to be a doctor, but then in high school, my grandpa was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and cancer. And every doctor just kind of gave him the answer of like, oh, there's nothing we can do like with what's available. And that was really frustrating for me to hear. So I decided that I wanted to pursue more of the innovative side so that I'd be more involved in the creation of the solutions and advancing the way that medicine works now. Yeah. And I would say you all have really good answers. I would say for me, I just liked robotics in high school. So that kind of got me into engineering and I really liked my AP bio class. So I kind of <laughs> just went with biomedical engineering in that way, but I've really enjoyed it so far. And just going off of that, what have you learned in your BME curriculum so far? Like what are some of your favorite classes that you've had here at USC? Um, I think since I'm just a sophomore, I've uh, had pretty limited experience so far to like the BME specific classes, but I really enjoyed my BME 101 course. It was like an introduction to what the major is and what it has to offer. And I really enjoyed it because I think 
at first BME sounds pretty broad and a little bit daunting as a major, but that class helped me to realize like what parts of biomedical engineering I liked because people all have different interests. You can be interested in the cellular side, the electrical side, or the mechanical side. And I personally, through that class, found more that I was interested in the electrical side. And I really enjoyed how the curriculum let you explore a little bit more with what you wanted. Uh, I guess my favorite class would probably have to be our BME 202, I guess. I guess that class gets a pretty bad reputation for how <laughs> difficult it is. But I think uh, just from like a pure curriculum standpoint, it's one of the best classes that BME has that shows you exactly how engineering can interface with like simulation and um, um, interface directly with biology, I guess. Since a lot of the stuff, the class deals with neuroscience and a lot of the stuff that we're doing is using simulation through like MATLAB and other softwares to predict exactly what cells will do. And it kind of it gave me an insight into how um, you can use engineering to predict what the human body will do. And you can kind of treat it somewhat like a machine to create new um, devices and technology to help with conditions that um, can't really be solved through other like direct med or medicinal methods. I would also have to say 202 is a class that holds a special place in my heart for a different reason, because I feel like that one is such a difficult class. They get a lot closer to the people. That was in a your big class. bonding moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel there's this giant project that we have to complete um, that Christian was talking about. And I feel like that was a bonding experience for everyone, just staying up till like 2 a.m. trying to finish that. So 202 definitely for me is also, uh, it's like one of those, what do you call it, like, Core college memories. Yeah, it's, like a core, <laughs> it's a core college memory for BME students here at USC. No, I think that's actually so true. I didn't actually think about it from the social standpoint, but I actually would have to say that if there was one class that brought me closer to the people that I'm friends with today, it would be BME 202. But I was actually going to say, Christian, that's so interesting that you bring that up because like, the more I reflect on the classes that I've taken at USC... I think about the fact that that was probably the first class where I realized that your body is governed by mathematical equations. Like, is that, is that, like, I just like literally, I like think back and I'm like, we were literally coding action potentials using an Excel sheet and like using like Euler's method and like random equations that like I thought were super abstract when I was taking math classes. But once you apply them to an action potential, and then, like, you, like, literally go to your next class, which is, like, BISC, like, 220, and then you learn about the action potential in a completely different way. I don't know. It's, like, definitely, like, I can appreciate that. It was a difficult class, but I can definitely appreciate the fact that we were learning about how to apply math and engineering to something that's so real. Yeah, it's definitely very paradigm shifting and definitely a, a rough ride while you're going through it. But <laughs> looking back on it, it's it's a bit fonder of a memory than it was taking it, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think to end, I mean, it kind of flows well into 210, which is kind of the class that you take after 202. You generally take 202 in the fall and then 210 in the spring. And 210 is kind of like, there's six mini projects. And so in 202, you're modeling the action potentials and really just looking at neuroscience. And 210 takes it a little bit more broad. So more like social issues, it'll be like modeling diseases or looking at things on a slightly larger scale. Um, but it's still using the same like computer modeling techniques and kind of applying them to different fields. I really appreciate that class. And I think that might be my favorite BME class this far, just because you get to really start seeing um, where like the major can take you and kind of what how to apply it. And you really get good at MATLAB, which is kind of a joke. I don't know. I think a lot of BME people, like you don't expect to learn so much programming in our curriculum, but you kind of become a MATLAB pro. Um, and 210 is a big part of the reason that you do that. Um, I think it's a really good class. And it's taught by some like a really awesome professor, um, Dr. Darjanio. So it's a good time. I think it's a very universal Thanks. class as well. <laughs> Grace brought up an interesting point that usually you do take BME 202 before you take BME 210. I actually took 210 first. And while that makes the learning curve of MATLAB much harder because it's a more MATLAB focused class, the coding project of 202 becomes significantly easier having taken 210 first. Uh, so if you are already more comfortable coding and that's something you want to do or you, something you can do, I would recommend it, but it's not for everyone to go that path. And most people don't. Um, as for my favorite class, I I feel like the BME curriculum definitely gives you earlier exposure to the more electrical and mechanical sides of it first. Uh, if 
your the cellular molecular emphasis sort of takes a while to get to the more focused parts of that. OCHEM A, which I know is a very tough class, uh, but I really enjoyed it actually. And I feel like that was sort of the first class where it really separates the emphases from each other. And if you like chemistry and you were good at Gen Chem, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. It's, it's a definitely an interesting challenge compared to the math and physics classes that you're used to taking. That's a unique take. I think I might <laughs> need you to tutor me in OCHEM next semester because I have been avoiding that class and I will be taking that finally. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would say my favorite class, um, I'm finally in like my upper div BME classes and I'm taking BME 451 right now, which is a micro devices class. And it's a really niche topic and it's honestly really interesting. The class is really small. It's like 12 people. Christian's in it with me. <laughs> it's a small class size setting, um, which is really nice because you get to interact with that for the professor on a one-on-one -on -one level. And there's also labs where we get, we're building our own um, micro device right now, which is really cool. So once you get through like the rough lower division classes and you get to the upper dips, it gets really exciting. But yeah. Okay. And this is also kind of part of like the favorite part of BME classes and things like that. But what's your favorite part of like the BME program as a whole? It doesn't necessarily have to be like classes, but it could be like any orgs you're involved with that are BME related or anything that you do that's BME related on campus. Yeah, I think going off of what a lot of people said earlier, I think the BME major at USC is something that's like really collaborative in terms of like you meet a lot of great people and it's not a major where everyone's out to get one another, like wanting to be better, or wanting other people to fail in order so for them to succeed. It's more one where it's like, you're accepting of the fact that the major is difficult, but you can get through it together. And I think that's something I really enjoy about it. Mm -hmm. Something else is I think all of us actually are really involved in the kind of like biomedical engineering club, ASBME, it's Associated Students of Biomedical Engineering. And I'd say that's been one of like the highlights of my like BME experience so far because I've been able to meet some really awesome people. Um, I got involved really early on as a freshman and that was kind of the main way that I met like upperclassmen, especially because my freshman year was completely online. So meeting upperclassmen didn't come as naturally as it would in an on-campus setting. And so I was able to like make kind of friends with people who I wouldn't have otherwise met and then get mentorship from them through our mentorship program and different things like that. And it's been a club that's really given back to me. And I know that almost every Viterbi major, I think every Viterbi major actually has an org specific club kind of similar. Um, but ASBME is like kind of notoriously the best one, I would say, or at least the most active we put on a lot of like corporate events and a lot of other things. And it really just has been a defining part of my BME experience. Like I know that the program wouldn't be the same without like that role being part of my, my time here. Yeah, I would definitely, I think everyone here is actually in ASBME, yeah. but ASBME has been a big part of my college experience. It's really fun. We actually just came back from San Antonio, Texas. We were there for a biomedical engineering conference. So you get to do fun things like that, which is really nice and just get really close to um, the people around you. I know one of my sweet mates right now, Grace, who is actually, she just finished talking. <laughs> um, we met through ASBME. So it's been a really great opportunity to connect with people. Yeah, I'd also actually say something on a similar level. So although I've been involved in ASBME, I think my favorite part of the BME program is probably the fact that due to it being a smaller major, you get to know everyone and like you can like say hi to people in the hallways and like you really do get to know everyone. And I think that that's a luxury that a lot of other majors don't necessarily have. Um, and yeah, I think like the fact that we have our own department having classes um, that are like BME coded is so, so important. So for example, um, like I know that a lot of people who are in my year are going to be taking similar classes as me. And as we mentioned earlier, BME 202 being like the crux of like us bonding, like that ends up being translated to many other classes because we're all on the same or similar path at least. So it's really nice. I'd have to say that it's the fact that the BME curriculum is like everyone's kind of running in parallel and that you get to know other people pretty well. In fact, like I can probably say that like I can name like everyone or almost everyone in my major in my year. So that's like a really big luxury that I think a lot of majors don't have. 
Yeah, I feel like I would kind of just echoing what everyone has said, but the community is pretty great. Uh, you definitely make pretty close friends throughout just taking classes. And I, I think uh, that's pretty unique when compared to maybe not other Viterbi majors, but a lot of other schools in general. Yeah, I guess I would con concur with everything that everybody has said thus far. I guess probably the only thing I can add to this discussion is um, there's another VME Associated Student Org on campus called MedDesign, which is basically an organization that puts together these small student design teams to like choose a need area within uh, the healthcare realm and to choose like create like either a device or a service to solve a problem within that need area. And I guess... Uh, I'm pretty thankful for med design because it's given me an understanding of user and patient centric design that I probably wouldn't have gone in all of my other classes since uh, most of the BME classes at USC are pretty technically focused and it's kind of easy to lose sight of the patients that you're actually trying to help. But by going through a program or going through med design and having to interview patients and clinicians and stuff, it's a little bit easier to keep my end goal in sight. So that's been a pretty useful experience as well. Yeah. Okay. So just shifting gears a little bit, I just am curious. I know a lot of students are interested in research, and different opportunities that there are on campus. So are any of you involved in research want to talk about your research that you do here at campus and also how you got involved because it can be intimidating to get involved in research as a freshman or an underclassman? Yeah. So I got involved with research pretty early on. I pretty much just cold emailed my current PI and Lucky enough, there was an opening uh, with a bunch of seniors graduating. And so I, again, my freshman year was online. So we didn't, we couldn't really do much uh, during that online freshman year. But I was able to come in in person during the summer afterward and participate in the bugs program. And a lot of PIs will ask that you spend one summer uh, researching with them. Not all of them, but it's a pretty common thing. And if you do it through the bugs program, it's a pretty good way to structure the way that you research over the summer. Uh, there is a stipend that comes with it as well. That's really nice. And it was probably a really good way to sort of crash course myself into uh, how upper level academia performs research. Yeah, I also did that program with Anthony, actually. We were in the same, what is it, a cohort? Yeah. Um, so we were both working there <clears throat> over the summer, and you had $3,000 for doing research over the summer, which was really nice. So there's definitely opportunities and money here at USC if you want to get paid for your research. There is also another summer, pro summer research program called the, it's in collaboration with Tsinghua, which is a um, and a, a college in Beijing, and normally they'll send people overseas for a summer to do research and to, I, I guess, spend time in Beijing for the summer. When I did it, it was online, so I had to do a lot of meetings at 3 a.m., which um, hopefully will not be a thing in the future, <laughs> but it was really cool to see how other countries um, do their research and their academia or, and their colleges and stuff. Um, and it was also a nice experience to like just experience a different culture, I guess, or at least what I could get from a Zoom meeting. Um, if you participate in this program in the future, you'd definitely be going over there. Uh, so I would recommend that. Um, and, and that also comes with money. I think we got seven thousand dollars. Not trying to like Ooh. rub it in or anything. But, <laughs> <laughs> That's more. but yeah, there's a lot of a lot of money in some research programs uh, if you just go out and look for them. Um, but yeah, definitely something that's worth participating in if you get the chance. Yeah, so I got involved in research in a slightly different way. Um, USC has a program called Curve. It's like Center for Undergraduate Research in the Turby, something along experience, mm -hmm. something along those lines. <laughs> um, but basically, I got involved in the school year, so I didn't dedicate a summer to research. Um, I did other things with my summer time, uh, and so I applied for Curve and then got accepted this was last year, about a year ago. And then what they do is basically you get accepted to the program um, and then you interview with different labs that you're interested in. And then they kind of match you with a lab that you're interested in, a lab who's interested in you. Um, and so I was ended up in the McCain lab, which is a really awesome uh, 
lab that's kind of molecular cellular focused. And so I got a lot out of the experience. I got to work in a wet lab, got to do self culture and got to learn a lot from it. And then I ended up this year uh, switching labs actually, because I, since joining that lab, became more electrical focused. And so now I actually work in a different lab that's not through Curve and it's through, they pay me directly. So they have their own budget, which is another way to get money from your research. There's lots of ways to get money from research. Um, there's like stipends, there's getting paid directly. There's like lots of options. Um, and then the research I'm doing now is in data segmenting for stroke patients. So looking at videos of stroke patients performing tasks and then segmenting those videos to eventually create a neural network to help see It'll basically predict what the treatment plan for a stroke patient will look like based off of their problem performing. I think it's like 12 different tasks in different motions. So it's really cool. Very different. Um, one was like tissue engineering and now it's like video research. Um, but I feel like that's part of the thing. Like that's something that's really cool about research is that there's so many options and a lot of it connects back to BME. And so you really aren't limited. You can kind of jump around and you can see new things and try new things. And people are really supportive of that. And the opportunities exist. And again, you can get paid for it. So if you like are in a financial position where you need to have an on-campus, on-campus job, you can do work in so many different ways. There's obviously like, um, you know, library jobs and things like that. But if you want to get involved in research, like that doesn't have to limit your opportunity. Like you can make the time to do that and get paid for it. So I think it's really awesome. Yeah, I think the Curve program is a really great one that we have within Viterbi. It's actually how I got involved in research when I came to the school. I'm currently working in the Applied Movement and Pain Lab. So we're studying how brain stimulation is being used to treat chronic pain. And we're also working with some machine learning programs because that's growing a lot in the engineering space. And I think research just gives you the opportunity to, opportunity to see how everything you're learning in class is like relevant because I think it's pretty easy with any major to get wrapped up in the coursework, just trying to pass the class, trying to do the homework, get everything on the checklist done. But when you're in a research lab, you actually have the opportunity to see, oh, okay, I'm learning this because it's actually helpful for people out there. So I really enjoyed doing research at USC for sure. There's also a lot of cool research opportunities that are related to the like healthcare and biology field or biotech field mm -hmm. that aren't in the biomedical engineering department mm -hmm. either. I personally mm -hmm. do research through the chemical engineering department in Dr. Malmstadt's lab. And the two projects that I've been focusing on thus far have been like dealing with 3D printing devices to help like create new drugs and to do drug delivery processes and stuff like that. So it's also definitely worth looking in like every different school for things mm -hmm. that you think might interest you because um, BME has a lot of really cool research areas. Um, but yeah, you might be missing out on something that you might enjoy more if you don't look into like the chemical, electrical, mechanical engineering departments as well. That's so true. My first lab was in the BME department, but the lab I'm in right now, the one that does like stroke patient modeling, um, it's actually a collaboration between the Iva and Young Academy, which is like really not a turby. It's like entrepreneurship and engineering kind of. Um, and then that, and also the, um, cinematography school. So it's really interesting and like, again, super not like BME really like BME department related, but is really BME application related, which is how I got involved. So definitely look at other schools and a lot of other like areas of research, like within other departments ends up going into BME because BME is so applicable. So they'll have a lot of like medical applications. That's super cool. No, I think I agree with everything that's been said. From my personal experience, I did a little bit, a little bit of research in high school and when I came into USC, I think the first thing I had to ask myself was like, what am I passionate about and what could I spend time outside of school doing? And so I think that like I identified my passion and then I started to look at USC professors and PIs that were working alongside that same mission or that same goal. So I ended up finding, um, or actually a professor ended up coming and presenting in my BME 101 class. Her name is Dr. Moral Musavi. And um, when she presented, she was presenting about uh, creating paper and thread-based electrodes to use in medical devices uh, for point of care and rapid testing in low resource settings. And so it kind of like aligned with what I wanted to do because I wanted to use medical devices as a way to improve health equity. And like gold electrodes are a major cost driver of medical innovation. So I was like, okay, if we can sub them out with paper and thread, that would be a huge benefit. So I ended up getting really inspired by her talk and I emailed her after the class and um, I ended up setting up uh, like an arrangement with her where we could 
like do some research. And then I ended up getting the Kerr Fellowship that Grace was mentioning earlier, and I'm still on the Kerr Fellowship. Um, and it's been a great experience. I think that any advice for any freshmen or underclassmen that are considering research, um, I would really say to first figure out what you are interested in, or if you don't already know what you're interested in, that's totally fine. But maybe just reading a bunch of professor bios or looking at a bunch of lab websites, seeing what catches your eye or what might interest you or what you would like to read more about. And then considering emailing that professor and setting up like maybe a 20 minute call where you can just learn about their research um, and then making your decision after to join that lab or not. And like Grace had a great experience, like having experiences in two different labs. And so, yes, I would say like you don't have to be in one lab and stick to it. There's a lot of value in diversifying your experiences. And I think that if you find multiple experiences that align with your mission, then you should totally do that. So um, it's definitely intimidating, but there is stuff for everyone. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we've been talking a lot about very Viterbi specific things. So I kind of want to switch gears a bit so people don't think we're just engineering people <laughs> like in, in our labs just doing work all day. So I just want to know what are some things you guys are involved with outside of Viterbi? Any like organizations or clubs that you're in that you want to talk about? Yeah, outside of Viterbi, I'm involved in the club volleyball team here at USC. It's a lot of fun because I think like Celine was mentioning earlier, a lot of our school days are occupied by STEM classes. And for me, volleyball is just a little bit of a break from all of that. I really enjoy it. And I also get to meet people in different majors, which is really interesting. And a lot of different personalities through the volleyball team. Like we have people from like the School of Art and Design. Then we have people from Marshall, some people in majors that I have no idea that they exist at USC, but a good mix of people. And it's really fun and a good release just to enjoy college. Yeah. Now, one of my main involvements outside of a Turby is a club called SC Outfitters. And it's basically a club that guides uh, outdoor trips for USC students. So I'm a guide for them, which means that I lead trips, plan trips, um, and take other students outside in areas around LA and sometimes beyond. We'll go uh, as far as we've had trips go to like Utah, Hawaii, potential for Alaska. So they lead trips all over. Um, and so some of like the trips I've led are like to like Joshua Tree or to Death Valley, backpacking, hiking, um, camping, kind of all the different things. And this has proved to be one of like the best communities I've found um, outside of a Turby because it's connected me with a lot of people who have a similar passion that I do to get outside. And it's also helped me spread the, my love for the outdoors and kind of one of my outlets. I mean, I think we all know like school's really hard and engineering is like really, really hard. Um, and so to have like a community and just a way to like, kind of release the stress or just like, you know, get out and see like not the red brick of USC as lovely as it is for, you know, a a weekend at a time has been a really good experience. And I've been able to connect with not only a lot of people who guide as well, who are in different majors, but also because I'm guiding other students, I've gotten to meet some really interesting people who are studying all different things, who take advantage of all different opportunities at USC. And it's been a really uniting experience. And it's fun. I see people around campus who like, we went like camping together or like we were, I don't know, we did like one on a hike or whatever. And it's like, I'll see them around and we'll say hello. And it's just nice to catch up and have those connections and so many more friendly faces around campus. I still need to go camping. I know. <laughs> I have. I've been trying to take camping. this group camping so much, and it's been hard to find a weekend, <laughs> but we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. I really want to go to Joshua Tree because I've lived in California my whole life and I've never been to Joshua Tree. Wait, come this Which Sunday. Actually I'm creepy. going. This Sunday? Yeah. Okay, I might be going Please to Joshua Tree. Please come to Joshua Tree this Sunday. <laughs> we're manifesting Sunday. it. If it's on the podcast, it has to happen. Podcast release day is on Sunday, so we're filming this on a Thursday. So so when this is released, Celine will be in Joshua Tree. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. I would say, for me, my commitment outside of the Turby is USC Helene's. It's a spirit organization on campus. There's two of them. There's the Trojan Knights and then there's USC Helene's. And that's been a really interesting experience for me because... Coming into college, I was never the type of person that would be like cheering at a football game. I feel like that was really outside my comfort zone. So joining USC Helene's has been really good for me in that way. Just getting to meet people from a ton of different majors. So we do really fun things that are USC tradition. We go to football games. We get first row at every game, which is awesome. 
it's really fun getting to high five all the people. I don't know who all the people are, but I'm high fiving them. <laughs> it's really fun. We also have a big rivalry game with UCLA, so it's called Conquest. So it's the entire week. I think it's coming up in two weeks, actually. And I'm going to be sleeping in the USC Village for the whole week because we protect the statue Hecuba there. So that'll be really fun. It's going to be my first time doing it since it I joined so last fun. semester. Yeah, it's really fun. We all just have a ton of food. They give us, actually, Kava gives us free food during that week. <laughs> no. Which is really, yeah, they like give us food. So it's going to be really fun. So I'm just going to be sleeping there. Um, and it's just a really great opportunity to meet people diversify perspective of, as people have been saying like meeting people outside of Turby has been great yeah I can say um I think my extracurriculars outside of Viterbi are not very engineering related but one of them has been a club called Lacey which is LA Community Impact it's a consulting club here at USC and I think that the reason why I enjoy it is because it's centered on social impact and so essentially, it's just pro bono consulting for nonprofits around LA and beyond um, across America. And so it's super fun. I think that like in engineering, you learn one type of problem solving, but in consulting, it's a different type of problem solving and both of them are super valuable. So it's been really helpful for me to have that, um, I guess, like extra way of like addressing issues. But at the same time, it's like in consulting clubs, people who are um, very like dedicated to social impact are going to be from many different majors. And the people that I've met at Lacey are super, super inspiring. I think there's so many people who I look up to and that have inspired me in different ways. And I very much appreciate that. I am a part of a student org called KDSAP or kidney disease screening and awareness program. And, uh, the student org does a lot of things, but my role within the club is, we kind of teach about chronic kidney disease in the community. One of the greater goals of the organization as a whole is to hold free uh, chronic kidney disease screening clinics within the local community. I haven't been able to partake in one of those yet, but uh, we do hold those in the fall. So it is some way to get some light clinical experience, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, it is a very pre-med heavy student org, which is part of the reason why I'm in it, but it is not engineering related. <laughs> I guess kind of going back to what Lauren was talking about with sports, um, I've, I've kind of been all over the place when it comes to sports at USC. Uh, I started doing jujitsu when I came here. I had Ooh. done like... I did not know that. I had done a different form of martial arts since I was like three or something. But I found something that was really cool at USC is that they have a whole bunch of different clubs dedicated to different forms of martial arts. Like just the variety that they have. They have like Kung Fu, boxing, Wing Chun, even like a whole bunch of different um, styles of martial arts. So I thought that was pretty cool. And also... Um, I know Lauren was talking about doing club volleyball, but they also have a lot of options for people who are just trying out new sports. I know I personally have been doing intramural volleyball. Um, as someone who hasn't played volleyball in their lives besides like maybe a couple times when I was eight. Um, <laughs> so I, I found that USC has a pretty welcoming community for like pickup sports at Lion Center or um, just for like small intramural tournaments and stuff. Um, so I've found that USC has been a pretty good environment for just trying out new things and other sports that I wouldn't have had the chance to try if I had, um, I guess, limited myself to stuff that I had experience with in high school or before that. Um, so yeah, that's been a pretty rewarding experience. Yeah, I know Helene's has a flag football team and I really want to join. So maybe I'll do that next One year. of my engineering clubs has a, uh, it's a intramural soccer team. And I always think that one's really fun. I get yeah. good Slack updates, but I've never partaked because I'm a little you too scared. Yeah, my sure. sure. but Christian has inspired me. In a soccer team. I, I, know. I really like playing in high school, and I haven't been able to play in a very long time. Wait, we should just play. Guys, yeah. this is <laughs> <one. laughs> We should have, we should have an ASBME <laughs> soccer team. Exactly. I feel like I want to do ultimate, personally. Oh, to join I, yes. Yes. <laughs> I feel like the ultimate team seems very fun. Oh, yeah, the I downside is they meet 10 to 12 on like Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> so that's the downside. But at night, not oh in the afternoon. God. 10 to 12 <laughs> at night. Yeah, no, that sounds like a lot of fun. And speaking of fun, what are some things you guys do on the weekend? Because I know we're engineering majors, but you need to have fun. I think something my friends and I really enjoy doing is just exploring LA <laughs> and seeing everything. I think... I don't know. I think there's so much to do around campus just to keep 
like I don't know there's like um I'm trying to think of some of the different things we did. Griffith. Oh, yeah. We went to Griffith to see the sunset. That was fun. My friend dragged me on the Hollywood sign hike. That was fun up until I realized how far it was. Um, <laughs> but a good experience. Something off my bucket list. Um, let's see. What else was there? Oh, I went to the Grove, which is like a mall kind of walk around area pretty nearby to campus. Um, yeah, just random touristy things. There's a lot to keep you entertained in L.A. and a lot for just... I guess making memories in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say for me, my friends always make fun of me because I leave camp, like leave LA area a lot. Um, again, because of like camping and things, I will end up going decently far on a given weekend. So I've had weekends where I've ended up in Big Sur, a lot of weekends in Alabama Hills, which is like kind of by like Whitney portal. Um, J tree. Let's see. Like, Death Valley, a lot of random spots are just like camping or rock climbing or hiking. Um, but I wouldn't really want to change my college experience. And LA is really awesome. And just California generally, because there's so many different climates, so many different things to do. Um, so yeah, definitely a different experience. So you can be exploring LA or exploring past LA and there's just a lot to see all around. There's also so many good places to eat. Okay. So <laughs> much good food. Directly by USC, there's like a decent amount of variety but there's also a whole bunch of places that you can get to like on the metro or on the bus um koreatown is immediately jumping to mind because koreatown has a bunch of amazing food um if you want to go farther than that the area around like sunset and melrose has like really really good food so uh, make friends with someone with a car first year um, a car. pro tip but like <laughs> uh yeah uh, just search yelp that's yeah. my recommendation town on town would recommend sautel it's a street kind of like by Culver City area, I believe. And there's just like, it's a full street of like all these restaurants and dessert places and shops. And it's so wonderful. Yeah, I really like the arts district. I feel like I end up there a lot, pretty much like every other weekend. It's really fun. There's salt and straw. You guys haven't had salt and straw. They have their seasonal flavors out right now. They're actually really good. I had, <laughs> it's like a chocolate cricket flavor. Yeah, the cricket oh, flavor. Oh, 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 not selling it. How is that seasonal? It's spooky. It's spooky. It was for Halloween. Okay, I'd like to say that, of course, Celine likes Celine has a matcha obsession. I was like, how is cricket Christmas? And cricket, it's a matcha cricket flavor? It was like a pumpkin. I think it's matcha. There's matcha. It's very Celine minus the cricket. (laughs) But I was, I asked for a sample and I thought the crickets were like little like fake chocolate crickets. And then the the lady gave me a sample and then I bit on like this giant thing. And I was like, oh, what's the lump? <laughs> she was like, oh, that's the cricket. I was like, oh. Wait, so it's real cricket. Yeah. It, it was like, like it was you have to consent yeah. to eating that. Okay, so like, okay, it's not vegetarian. So <laughs> I was like, I can't have it. <laughs> that's why you can't have it. But it was actually um, really good. And they also had a pumpkin bread one. So they have like the cream cheese. <laughs> like, the polar opposite. Like, <laughs> the cricket or the pumpkin. <laughs> no, it was yeah, so good. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> On the weekend, we eat crickets. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so good. I promise. But now it's like Christmas time, basically, right? Because Halloween. So peppermint. Right? So wait. now, peppermint now it's peppermint. Okay, we have to up an important, weekend? important weekend thing of game days, which there's one this week. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I, I make it a, a very important obsession to go to every single football game that we have, uh, even the one on the Thanksgiving break because I don't live too far. Actually, I don't know if there's one at home. This, no, I think it is. I think is it's that the Notre, Notre Dame, Dame right? game? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll be here for that. But, uh, yeah, please go to the games. They're our so team's fun. good now. Our team's good now. We couldn't say that last year. But, yeah, our, our team's good. Our <laughs> team is good. Our team See, we don't actually lie here. was very bad last year, but now it's good. It's fun to go to games. It's really fun. Thank you, Lincoln Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to say, um, I think that LA is, like, great because – um, a lot of like artists and music like artists come to LA and it's like a lot of other universities that are in college towns like sometimes they don't get the ability for like singers to like come to their city but LA is like really awesome like um, there's like concerts all the time and you can see like your favorite artists and so I think that that's what I like to do on weekends I make it a point to go to a concert if there is one for my favorite artists yeah Asuna and I went to go see Kendrick Lamar in September 
And it was at the Staples Center, so it was literally like a 10 minute drive from campus, which was really, really fun. Yeah. And I think we came out of a midterm that day. Yeah, we did. (laughs) Yeah, we came out of a midterm or no. Yeah, we we came out of midterm and immediately went to the concert. So it was super nice. That's a good way to celebrate. (laughs) Right, (laughs) right. Seeing Kendrick Lamar live. All right. So we're coming up on about 40 minutes. So I don't want to take too much more of your time. But my last question is for our high schoolers because they just submitted their early admission applications on November 1st, which was two days ago. So we have a lot of high school seniors listening to this podcast, probably nervous about receiving their admissions decisions. So for our last question, do you have any advice to give to the high school seniors as they wait um, just about the college admissions process in general? This is a super not fun time, but college is really fun. So (laughs) you're in kind of like the more tough part right now, but it gets better. And I'd say it always works out, even if it feels really stressful in the moment. And I mean, you have probably like another month or two to submit your the rest of your applications. But after January 1st, then you're officially a site semester senior. Um, and so if you fall into that category, just be sure to have a good time and make the most of that experience because you're kind of going through it right now. But uh, at that point, you're going to be a little more relaxed. You can't do much about it um, at that point. So have fun with friends and be sure to enjoy the last bits of high school. Um, I know a lot of us were in the COVID year where high school shut down. So my big advice would be to enjoy it while you can because ours got cut short. So make sure to take advantage of all that. And I think a lot of people would say to do things college related, but I say live your last moments of high school and live in high school, not just thinking about college. Um, because you should be happy and present in the moment. There's a lot of truth there. I think that when I was submitting college apps, um, I was in this like idea that I will have fun second semester senior year. And then second semester senior year got cut short because of COVID. So it's like, you have to be living life as you're living it. Like there's no waiting, there's no postponing, there's no procrastinating on fun. Like just have fun if you can to the most of its potential and enjoy this time to the extent that you can. So um, yeah, while you're submitting college apps, make sure to have a little bit of time to yourself, a time to your friends and family, because, you know, you might not be in the same town that you're in for high school. So it's really important that you are making the most of it while you're still there. Yeah, I would say for me, whenever I have, whenever I'm on a panel and I'm answering questions or I have parents and families pull me aside to ask for any advice. I always tell them the same thing is just to take a deep breath and whatever is meant to happen will happen. You will end up wherever you need to be, whether that's USC or a different place, a different university, you will end up where you're supposed to be in the future and it will all work out. So team. (laughs) Okay, perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. It was a really fun conversation and I will leave it to Maya and Paul to give the outro. And welcome back, everybody. Celine, I just want to thank you so much for bringing all these people on the podcast. I think biomedical engineering is one of my favorite other types of engineering to hear about because you can do so much with it. And also, I I am just a little bit biased because I worked with so many uh, biomedical engineers this past summer, and it's just such a cool such a cool combination of like biology and engineering. I think a lot of biomedical engineers, I know they're really driven by a purpose of um, improving people's health. So I loved that. Celine, what was, what, what's one thing that you want uh, students to know about biomedical engineering that maybe you didn't know before you got into it? I would definitely say how many opportunities there are within biomedical engineering. I think going into it, I really thought that there was only one route that people usually would take. A lot of people typically take Um, the medical device route, but there really are so many things you can do with biomedical engineering. And as we talked about in the podcast, there are so many different routes that my friends are taking specifically. So you can go the pre-med route. You can also do pharmaceuticals and you can do graduate school, more research focused things. So I really think students should have the opportunity to explore all the different things that you can do within BME and then decide which route's best for you. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Well, uh, Celine, thank you so much for bringing this conversation to us and for all of our guests that are out there. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, We will be back next week with another whole brand new episode of the Turvy Voices. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great rest of your week and fight on.